first, let's let's kind of talk about maybe a little bit of history of Toast of the Barrels. I know we've all kind of talked about like where did we see it first, and when was it kind of really start ringing into the the presence that you kind of see is today. It's like everybody seems to be doing a Toast of the Barrel. Right. But Fred, I'll let you start with you because I think you might have the the deepest history with it. Yeah. So when we look at what Toasted is, it's essentially a, a, a second use. It's a second barrel that was specially created, right? So it's specially created for the use of this. We we. So it's a little bit outside of the barrel finishes in that these the barrel finish category is that these are barrels that were used in another category and they were applied into into a finish. These are barrels, the toasted or double barrel finish or double oak finish. These are barrels that were uniquely created for the intent purposes of a bourbon being put into it after it had been matured in its first barrel. So these are new charred or, or new toasted or new charred oak. So these are new, new barrels. So it's a virgin oak. So there's a different process here from a chemical level in that the wood hasn't been beat up by another spirit or wine for the past 20 years or whatever. Yeah. Well, the other thing about it with the toasted side of it too is it's typically not your level four char. It's Correct. something that it's it's lighter than a one. And sometimes what they'll do is do, do a, they'll do a light toasting, which I know like Woodford Reserve Double Oak, they do a light toasting and then they have sort of like a level one char, which is the lowest kind of level char. Actually, probably toasting is the lowest level charge you can actually get. But well, it's not a char, it's, it's, it's toasted. To- <laughs> so, so, a, so a good way to describe like the difference between toasting and charring, imagine uh, the difference between the flame of a Bic lighter like and a torch. So a Bic lighter, you know, you take a you you take a lighter and you kind of wave it underneath a stave or a board. And you kind of go back and forth. You see it kind of like having an impact, a little bit of it uh, searing off, and just kind of like a, a a slight sear. You put a torch on that same piece of wood, and it'll start cracking and burning very quickly. So that's the difference between a, a toast and a char. And, and the toasting technique. It was really, you know, created for wine, and what it does is, is it cre- it pulls out particular wood sugars inside the wood that will get destroyed by a char only. And so, you know, whiskey barrels. You hear people talk about them being expensive all the time, but in the in the in the spirits and wine world, whiskey barrels are typically the cheapest barrels, and that's because they're just they're created charred and sent off to Jim Beam or Jack Daniels, and it's in it's only recently. When I say recently, I mean the past two decades, 25 years, 30 years, I guess going back into the 90s is really when it would have started from a consistent level. You saw a lot more toasting being introduced into the bourbon community. Now, the first people to do it are actually people we don't have on the shelf, and there are people that you know don't really get a lot of credit. But the first, the first guy, to my knowledge, to, to really do this was Pritchard's out of Tennessee. Yeah. And he had a product uh, that he was trying to get called Double Barrel. It was, it was called a Double Barrel. And he he ran into some, much like Phil Pritchard did in a lot of his career, he ran into a lot of uh, regulatory issues and got a lot of rejections for the things that he wanted to do. You know, this, this is a man that was before the wave of craft distilling, before the wave of the bourbon boom. And he just did a lot of stuff that the federal government did not like uh, approve and that was that was one of them so like when when woodford reserve came out with double oak he was kind of like what the hell you know me to it they stole my they they stole my idea he's like what the hell is this all about you know but but woodford really and and there were others who were, were doing it but woodford reserve was really the first one and double oak comes out and i think it was 2000 you know 2010 to 2012, somewhere around there. And I actually have a very special connection to Woodford Reserve Double Oak because when I got my wisdom teeth taken out, okay. okay, all four of my wisdom teeth taken out, I mean, I had I had trouble tasting after that. Like, I don't know if like my, my mouth was numb, I got hit with a nerve or something. I don't know. I don't know, but I had trouble tasting. And the only bourbon that I could taste for a long time was uh, the Woodford Reserve Double Oak. And, and that was like, uh, and to this day, like I, I taste, I taste that, uh, that bourbon and it brings a smile to me because it was like, you were there for me when I needed you most, when you know, was, it's kind of was was down and out. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, shortly thereafter, very close to it, 
toasted barrel from Michter's came out and they really, you know, double oak is a little bit more of a mainstay product. Uh, toasted oak is a product that is, you know, more limited edition. A lot of people don't know, especially during this time, Michter's was contract distilling, you know, with Brown Foreman, but they were doing unique stuff for themselves. And the Michter's uh, toasted oak barrel to me has been the hands down category leader in the last few years, we've seen a lot more toasted series come out. Now it's, it's I swear to God, there's like a, there's a, you got a toasted, I got a toasted, you get a toasted. And it's like, everyone has a toasted product these days. Mm-hmm. 